Beijing buying up land around U.S. military bases, a home ownership issue or national security issue. A reporter presses a White House spokesman on the topic. China's new sanctions targeting two CEOs from U.S. companies. That's over arms sales to Taiwan. China's leader leaving the country for the first time in two years and meeting with an old friend, Russian President Vladimir Putin. And buzz in the Indo-Pacific region, Russia and China kicking off joint drills as European nations flex their own muscles, all while the U.S. and Japan talk China. Welcome to China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. China's buying up land near U.S. military bases, and the White House appears to be dismissing concerns about it as a home ownership issue. This after a reporter pressed the National Security Council spokesman on the topic. Here's more. During the White House press briefing on Tuesday, Al Jazeera reporter Kimberly Halkett asked John Kirby, the National Security Council coordinator, the following question. I'm wondering, uh, given the fact that uh, known adversary, in the case of China, uh, foreign buyers are buying up U.S. real estate, in some case farms around military installations, is this on the administration's radar and what is being done perhaps to study this or to protect Americans from making sure that homes remain affordable, and so on. The reporter pointed out that Chinese investors were the most active buyers of U.S. real estate last year among foreigners. Earlier this year, a Chinese company headed by a Chinese Communist Party official invested in a corn mill in Grand Forks, North Dakota. The land was within 15 miles of the Grand Forks Air Force Base, which houses sensitive drone, satellite, and surveillance technology. Here's how Kirby responded to the question. I think the question of home ownership is a little bit out of my out of my swim lane, but but national security issue, particularly when it comes to around military installations. What I will tell you is that uh, the president has been uh, nothing but clear about our concerns about Chinese uh, unfair trade practices and economic practices. About I, trade. I understand that, ma'am, but. Security and buying up land around uh, military installations. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm probably not the right person to ask about home ownership here in the United this States. Isn't about home ownership. This is about buying up land around okay, military gonna, installations. Is that a concern to this administration? Lawmakers from both parties have voiced concern over Chinese land purchases near military installations. Senate Intelligence Committee Chairman Mark Warner, a Democrat, said in July that we should be seriously concerned about Chinese investment in locations close to sensitive sites such as military bases around the U.S. Republican Senators Marco Rubio and Ted Cruz have introduced a bill to restrict such purchases. On the state level, California pushed a new rule earlier this week. It bans the sale of foreign land for foreign governments and any companies that may be controlled by them. Fourteen states now have foreign land ownership. President Biden signed an executive order on Thursday. It aims to strengthen the review process for foreign investment deals in the U.S. Right now, a U.S. government agency called the CFIUS guards against them. If the agency suspects a deal could threaten America's national security, it can recommend that the president block the deal. The president's new order doesn't change CFIUS's review process or legal jurisdiction. Instead, it asks the agency to consider several more factors when reviewing deals. One of them is data. The order directs CFIUS to be more cautious about deals that give foreign investors more access to American sensitive data. The executive order didn't name China, but experts say Beijing has been after Americans' data for decades. Under the Obama administration, Chinese intelligence hacked the Office of Personnel Management and got away with security clearance data on more than 22 million Americans. And there are other factors, like investments that can facilitate technology transfer in key industries. That can threaten U.S. technological leadership and make America vulnerable to supply chain disruptions. China is pushing a new round of sanctions, this time targeting the CEOs of two American companies over their arms sales to Taiwan. A Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson said Friday that the sanctions would fall on Boeing Defense and Raytheon. 
He noted there in response to the State Department's approval of military equipment sales to Taiwan. Those sales include 60 anti-ship missiles and 100 air-to-air missiles. The Pentagon announced the package in the wake of China's aggressive military drills around Taiwan. The drills also followed a visit last month by House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. She is the highest-ranking U.S. official to travel to Taipei in decades. China did not explain what the sanctions would entail or how they would be enforced. Beijing previously sanctioned the companies Raytheon, Boeing Defense and others involved in arms sales to Taiwan. Friday's announcement marks the first time Beijing identified individuals from these companies. As concerns grow about social media and national security, senators are asking TikTok if it will stop sharing data with China. NTD's Arlene Richards reports. At a Senate committee hearing on Wednesday, TikTok Chief Operating Officer Vanessa Pappas said in a prepared speech, quote, there's no responsibility more important to me than protecting the people on our platform. She also said that the company has been, quote, working assiduously to address national security concerns identified by U.S. policymakers and regulators. But when asked a specific question about national security concerns, Papa stuck to the script. Can you make the commitment, though, that I just asked you to make, that you will commit to cutting off all data and metadata flows to China, Chinese-based TikTok employees, ByteDance employees, or any other party located in China? What I can commit to is that our final agreement with the U.S. government will satisfy all national security concerns, yes. John Mills, a former Pentagon cybersecurity director, said the TikTok executive is being coached. Let's face it, this is, this is a legal game that is being played back and forth between them and us. And they are playing the seam line essentially because they are pretending to be TikTok USA Incorporated and pretending to know nothing and have no connection to TikTok China Incorporated, which is utter silliness. It's no secret that Chinese TikTok employees inside and outside of China can access U.S. user data. But Papa said there were protocols to ensure sensitive information doesn't get into the wrong hands. Meanwhile, Mills recalled that China stole 21 million files out of the Office of Personnel Management, a federal agency that manages civil servants. There is nothing good about about this. NTD reached out to TikTok for comment on Chinese employees viewing the U.S. data and a spokesperson said in an email that access to data is controlled by a U.S.-led security team. Mills said the Chinese Communist Party uses data from TikTok to influence Americans. For every dollar... Russia can throw at disinformation and manipulation. China can throw 20 to shape, manipulate, cause hate and discontent in American society. My estimate was 100 million they spent uh, to manipulate the social activities during uh, the summer of 2020. The Senate hearing came one day after Twitter whistleblower Peter Zatko told Congress that Twitter is employing a Chinese agent. Arlene Richards, NTD News, New York. Chinese leader Xi Jinping meets with Russian President Vladimir Putin, who he calls an old friend. And Didi's Chenny Wu tells us more about what the two leaders discussed on Thursday. China and Russia have both been escalating tensions with the West, and now they seem to be joining forces. Together we have managed to achieve tangible results in the development and interaction in the economy, trade, industry, science and high technology, environmental protection, cultural, humanitarian and many other areas. On Thursday, Chinese Communist leader Xi Jinping and Russian President Vladimir Putin met in Uzbekistan, the first meeting since Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Putin thanked Xi for Beijing's so-called balanced position on the situation in Ukraine. China has refrained from condemning Russia's operation against Ukraine or calling it an invasion. This is in line with the Kremlin stance, which refers to the war as a special military operation. Xi did not mention Ukraine in his public remarks, but he did say that Beijing is willing to work with the Kremlin to install stability and positive energy into a world in turmoil. The two leaders met on the sidelines of a summit for the eight-nation Shanghai Cooperation Organization. The security alliance was created as a counterweight to U.S. influence in the region. Other than China and Russia, the group also includes India, Pakistan and four former members of the Soviet Union and Central Asia. The last time Xi and Putin met in person was just weeks before Russia invaded Ukraine.
Back then, they declared a no-limits partnership and inked a promise to collaborate more against the West. Xi's trip to Uzbekistan was his first outside China since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. Chen Wu, NTD News. On the economic side, China and Russia have what experts call complementary economies. They plan to boost bilateral trade by a massive 50 percent by 2024. Here's more on that. China needs energy big time. And Russia has an abundance of oil and natural gas. In fact, more than half of Russia's exports to China in 2020 were energy related. Russia's recently completed power of Siberia pipeline when running at full capacity could make China the second largest importer of Russian natural gas after Germany. And the two countries are also planning another cross-border pipeline. After the war began in an effort to reduce their dependence on Western banking systems and to sidestep U.S. sanctions, China and Russia began moving away from using U.S. dollars and euros for trade. They'll use their own currencies instead. As Chinese and Russian leaders met in Uzbekistan, so did the two nations' navies in the Pacific. Russia's defense ministry announced Thursday that Russian and Chinese forces have started joint military exercises in the Pacific Ocean. Warships from the two nations were set to perform drills in tactical maneuvering, signals communication, artillery fire, and shipboard helicopter operations. The ministry said the joint patrols are aimed at strengthening naval cooperation. Besides Russia and China, France is showing off its air power in the Indo-Pacific region. The Pegasus 2022 Air Force exercise started last month and will run until September 18th. German aircraft also recently flexed their power in the area, looking to push back on China's growing aggression. Both European countries presented their abilities to swiftly deploy battle forces to the region from thousands of miles away. As for what's next, Australia's largest multinational drill, dubbed the Pitch Black Exercise, will be held in the country's Northern Territory this October. It will span three weeks. U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin welcomed his Japanese counterpart to the Pentagon Wednesday. Austin highlighted the friendship between the U.S. and Japan. Our alliance remains a cornerstone of peace and prosperity in the Indo-Pacific. And our countries are bound by deep friendship and trust, as well as by our common interests and shared democratic values. He also emphasized the challenges presented by China's aggressive behavior. So let's be clear. China's coercive actions in the Taiwan Strait and in the waters surrounding Japan are provocative, destabilizing, and unprecedented. Our response, together with Japan and our other allies and partners, has been responsible, steady, and resolute. The two defense ministers discussed efforts to strengthen U.S.-Japan defense cooperation, as well as concerns over military exercises and shooting drills by Russian and Chinese warships off Japan's coast. We can never condone unilateral attempts to change the status quo in any parts of the world. Beijing has been increasing its military cooperation with Moscow, including taking part in several Russia-led drills. According to media reports, China's official delegation is expected to be barred from attending Queen Elizabeth's lying in state ahead of the state funeral. A parliamentary source says UK House Speaker Sir Lindsay Hoyle will prevent them from entering Westminster Hall, where the ceremony will be held. That says seven UK lawmakers remain sanctioned by Beijing. The ceremony will allow the public to pay respects. Last September, Sir Lindsay and his counterpart in the upper chamber, the British version of the Senate, blocked the Chinese ambassador to the UK from visiting Parliament. A parliament spokesman and the speaker's spokesman declined to comment. Two lawmakers sanctioned by China, Sir Ian Duncan Smith and Tim Lochton, have been raising concerns about the delegation's possible attendance at the Queen's funeral, calling it extraordinary the Chinese officials had received an invite, despite Russia, Belarus and Burma or Myanmar being excluded. In response to media reports, China's foreign ministry on Friday called on the UK to follow diplomatic protocols. 
That's all for today's China in Focus on YouTube. We're now sharing a shortened version of our program here after being demonetized for more than a year. Here's what to look out for in our second half. Lee Smith, host of NTD's Over the Target, sat down with General Robert Spaulding. He shares insights on China's unrestricted warfare and how it's happening right here on American soil. The full episode is available on our partner platform, Epoch TV. To sign up, click the link down below. Thanks for watching China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer, and see you tomorrow. The 2022 NTD 8th International Chinese Vocal Competition will be held from September 29th to October 2nd at the Merkin Hall of Kaufman Music Center in New York City. The competition is honored to have specially invited vocalists with the world-renowned Shen Yun Performing Arts to serve on its panel of judges. The gold award is $10,000. For more information, please visit vocal.ntdtv.com.